Film adaptations of books have been done many times in the history of film, from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to the Harry Potter franchise. But what about an adaptation of an adaptation? We have taken the films Pride and Prejudice and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and looked at what a small change in genre the story can have on the audience as a whole. Pride and Prejudice was written by Jane Austen in 1813 and is a piece of classical literature that has been adapted to the big screen many times. In 2009, Seth Rayum released a parody of the book that contains zombies as the main element to differ from the classic novel. In this documentary, we will be looking at the genre, narrative structure, visual analysis, representation and audience of the films and comparing them together. The difference in genre can change the impact a film has on its audience. The genre of Pride and Prejudice is a period romantic drama as it is set in the Georgian Regency period but is fundamentally a romantic drama. The iconography that anchors us to this time period is the use of carriages, the way the characters dress since now they would wear the type of male and female clothing they wore back in the 1790s. But genre is far more complex than it appears. Different elements make a genre. We, as an audience, link specific signs to a specific genres. This process is called iconography, in a, a way of labelling films to categorise them. Whereas Pride and Prejudice and Zombies focuses on horror genre more than the drama, but it is, still has the main genre of romance between its characters. The horror genre is something that has always appealed to a large audience. Adding this to a classic piece of literature that is widely known for its take on female representation and the elements of romance in the 18th century is bound to gain attention from the general public. The plot device that drives both plots forward is Mrs. Bennet's desire to marry off one of her daughters to the rich single Mr. Bingley. And it is through this one desire that all the trials and rewards the Bennet family endure originates from. Lydia's elopement with Mr. Wickham, the marriage of Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy, the eventual marriage of Jane and Mr. Bingley is all down to this one decision. Deborah Knight said, Satisfaction is guaranteed with the genre. The deferral of the inevitable gives us pleasure in the guessing game. Which is very true for Pride and Prejudice and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, since we like to try and guess what genre it is. Horror is, like all genres, an ever-changing part of filmmaking. Horror took its biggest change after the events of World War II and mankind saw that the scariest monsters they could make were humans. Monsters were made to be beings that would go against God. Now monsters are beings that go against human nature. The narrative structure of Pride and Prejudice and Pride and Prejudice Zombies follows Todorov's equilibrium, the theory of the three phases of equilibrium. First we begin in a stable environment Everything is as it should be, as but events happen that disrupt the stable lives of our character. Our final stage is the neo equilibrium, the new stage of normality after the events of the film happen. This type of narrative structure works well because, much like Deborah Knight said, it gives us pleasure in guessing which stage of Todorov's narrative structure happens next, even though it is the most widely used narrative in film. As per usual, the equilibrium doesn't last long as the disruption begins during the scene when Mrs. Bennet begs her husband to allow her girls to attend the ball. For Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, we have the narration done by Mr. Bennet explaining what has happened to the world. This is our equilibrium. Not like most beginnings, but it is stable. Events happen that start to break the stability that the characters have built. This is our disequilibrium when things take a turn for the worst. By using Todorov's theory, the storyline is easy, is easy to follow. Like the book, it helps audiences know what is happening around them without going so far into the plot they risk losing their audience to a long-winded explanation. Starting the film with a brief explanation of what has happened and how we are led to this point in time where we join the Bennets in their family troubles with zombies to worry about as well. Elizabeth is the focus of the narrative as she's our heroine of the film the one the audience will be rooting for to defeat the zombies and find love. The idea of using the story people know the ending of is a strange choice for a production company to make, as there is little to expect from the film. People know how it ends. This is known as an enigma code. However, choosing to make an adaptation of an adaptation could have a wider effect than simply remaking this original book. It gives the opportunity to reach a larger audience and choosing Todorov's equilibrium as a base of the structure as a chance to cover the book in three stages that create the story. A theorist by the name of Roland Barthes gave us the concept of modes of address. 
One particular mode of address is narration, which is used in both films as a way of showing us more of the story through monologue. Using this method as a way for the audience to experience and connect with the character. For example, when Elizabeth is reading the letter from Mr. Darcy about what really happened between him and Mr. Wilson, we are learning the truth as Elizabeth does, as it is addressing us as well as her. The representation of women within Pride and Prejudice is very traditional for some characters, whereas Pride, Prejudice and Zombies is quite different from the original book written by Jane Austen. Take Jane and Georgiana for an example. They are both very much naive, innocent and pure, which is the way women were stereotyped in the novels of the Georgian Regency period. Another popular stereotype of the time is the characteristics of Mrs. Bennet. Because of her desire to marry off her daughters to a good husband, our heroine, Elizabeth Bennet, on the other hand, is very different from those mentioned before. She is headstrong and judgmental, and she is considered less accomplished than the female characters because of a show of an orthodox intelligence and temperament. Both versions of Elizabeth are strong women in their own stories, but the addition of the horror element, such as zombies, gives this Elizabeth a different sort of strength. She is trained alongside her sisters to battle monsters instead of partaking in activities that a young woman of the era was expected to do. Like the original story, Elizabeth's mother, Mrs. Bennet, is still determined to wed her daughters to well-respected men of, uh, of a wealthy nature. Elizabeth still has strong views on what a man should ask of his wife, which to her is that they would respect her skill as a warrior and never ask her to become anything else other after her years of training to protect her family from the zombie hordes. Much like his character in the other versions of the story, Darcy still believes a woman should be a suitable housewife, which brings us to the representation that is focused on in both films. A woman is expected to know her place in society, to be to the man's side as a good wife. Most of the above mentioned stereotypes have been used all, over, all the time in romantic period dramas. However, we enjoy seeing them because of the guest, Deborah Knight, who said we get pleasure in searching for aspects of films that we see all the time so that we can play the guessing game once again. The visuals of Pride and Prejudice are stunning to say the least. However, there is more to them than just face value, since as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. This shows us that even a single scene of the film has its own part to play in the grand scale of things. To see them all, you need to know how to read them. This is technique is known as semiotics, the science behind symbols and signs, which is made popular by Roland Barthes. So let's look at first the, clo the colour of the clothing the characters of Pride and Prejudice wear. Mrs. Bennet wears blue, showing that she is confident, often too confident. She also wears a lot of pink, showing her nurturing and caring side, since she has nurtured and raised her children. Lydia wears yellows and origins, meaning joy and happiness, which matches her character very nicely. Elizabeth wears dark brown clothing, which represents her stability, masculinity, since she has a lot of the masculine features, since she is independent, witty and strong-willed. Dark brown also symbolises endurance, which is a main characteristic of Elizabeth. As with its counterpart, the village dance in Pride of Prejudice and Zombies keeps to the Georgian era of clothing, with the Bennett sisters wearing elegant dresses. Important characters are singled out by the clothing they wear. Elizabeth wears a dark blue gown, whereas her sisters are wearing plain white dresses, making Elizabeth stand out more to the audience as the protagonist. The same can say, uh, be said for Mr Bingley, who wears a bright red coat to make him easier to spot among the brown coats of the other gentlemen. But it's not just the clothing that has meaning behind it. During the scene when Darcy first proposes to Elizabeth in Pride and Prejudice, it's pouring down with rain, which is known as pathetic fallacy, to show one's emotion through the weather, a technique which is used often in filmmaking. The opening scene in which Mr. Bennett narrates the events that lead up to the film, the audience is greeted with a childlike pop-up book titled The Illustrated History of England. As Mr. Bennett tells the story in a manner similar to what a father would to his children, you can hear giggling from his daughters as he reads, the, reads to them, giving the feeling that the audience is part of a bedtime story, a technique known as denotation and connotation. Something else to look for when watching a film, something called proxemics the distance between characters. It helps to determine the status of relationships between characters and their inward feelings about each other. For example, Jane and Mr Bingley are very close to each other in a number of different scenes show they grow in love for each other. Another example is Elizabeth and Darcy, who dislike each other throughout most of the film, but as the story progresses, so does their affection, shown by the fact the distance between them shrinks as their feelings towards each other change. The audience type of Pride and Prejudice is more orientated towards women, 
As the original source material is a romance novel, in the Georgian Stay Regency period it was seen as very feminine. But on the other hand, romance novels can sometimes be more can be adapted for men. The primary audience of the film, however, is still predominantly female. So Pride and Prejudice is still seen as, fem as a feminine novel today. The target audience for the film would be 25 to 50 year old white female Christian or atheist, married and single with college level education. The reason for that is because it's based off a classic novel, which most people would pass off as another uninteresting product really, made for women. However, highly educated women will have a wider knowledge of the book. Some may have already read the book. It is aimed at 25 to 50 year olds because they are the, mo the most likely age group that has heard or even read the book before. As for the choice of white female, no idea, this is because the ethnic minority of the film is filled with white cast, and the views of religion in the film would gain a Christian or atheist audience. The target audience for Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is very different from the audience of its counterparts because of the different genre. The film is rated a 15. The age group that would enjoy this film would be between 15 and 30, depending on the interest in a period drama with zombies added into it. It would pique the interest of people who know of the book and its original, using a strong female lead like Elizabeth Bennet Jaws in the female audience because of the positive representation of women fighters. Using demographics to decide the audience is something that filmmakers have done for many years, but the technique isn't that reliable because a person's position in the demographic scale does not define their opinions on what they enjoy. For this to be more successful in filmmaking, test screenings are used to see the impact the film would have on a group chosen by the producers before any final decisions are made on the film. At the beginning we aim to analyse two different adaptations to show the impact a small change can do to the overall film. With the knowledge that we have gathered through close analysing, our conclusion can be easily summarised. By changing the genre, the film process is altered in such a way that both films have a different impact on their audience and affect the way the film is received by the public. Pride and Prejudice was widely received in the UK on its opening weekend, whereas Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was not as widely received in cinemas except for in the US.